So uh, I'm going to use an application, NPChat, to illustrate how the PubSub API works um, for a social media application. Um, and I will also talk about how uh, naming and security work in this particular ap application. This is joint work with my students, Jeremy Clark and Ashish Gawande. Okay, so um, MP Chat is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer social media application. We presented the design in a 2019 ICM paper, but uh, today I'm going to focus more on the PubSub aspect of the application. So uh, this application allows users to share multimedia content with their friends and they can discover other users to add to their friends list. They can also establish trust with each other based on real life models. For example, if they meet in person, they can establish trust that way. Or if they work in the same organization, they can use the organizational trust anchor to establish trust, or they can establish, establish trust through mutual friends. And every user can control who has access to their data. So even if they are friends, they may not share certain content with some of the friends. So uh, I will show how they can do that. This is a decentralized application. So the uh, number one requirement for the design is we don't want any central entity to store the data or control access to the data. And also there is no single user directory. So no attackers or government can obtain all the users that are using this application. And we don't want the application to rely on some specialized infrastructure. They can do this in an ad hoc wireless network. Um, there's no central or single trust anchor. They will use whatever trust anchor uh, that will work in their situation. And every user can control access to their own data. So first I, I'm going to talk about how the users name their data and how they discover other users and become friends, how they publish and fetch data, how uh, well, the application encrypts and decrypts the data. So everything is secure. Um, only friends, authorized friends can access the data, but I'm not going to focus on this part due to time constraint. Um, the most important part is every user will automatically receive updates or new data from their friends whenever, whenever their friends publish some new content. That's achieved through a PubSub API. So first, um, how do we design the naming? Uh, because this is a decentralized application, we don't want to use a single application namespace. We want every user to use their own namespace. For example, uh, Alice here has her own namespace, Alice though, and we uh, basically the application will append mpchat and a user name specific to mpchat to this user's prefix and then this whole name prefix becomes Alice's MP chat name prefix. Name prefix. Um, similarly, Bob is using his uh, university's name prefix here and uh, MP chat will attach MP chat and a username for Bob. Uh, and this entire name becomes Bob's MP chat name prefix. Uh, another important uh, element of a user's identity is uh, their public and private key. That's 
their security identity. MPChat automatically generates a public-private key pair under the user's namespace whenever the user starts using the application. So um, this is only generated once, but it can be replaced if uh, there is a problem. So for example, um, Alice's MPChat namespace, as we have shown, is alice.do slash mpchat slash alice.do123. And then the public key name will be uh, this mpchat username slash key slash key ID. So this uniquely identifies Alice's public key. And the other users will use this public key to authenticate Alice's data. This public key is self-signed and encoded into a QR code so that other users can scan this public key when they become friend in person. The user, any user can also obtain a certificate of this public key from a trust anchor associated with the user's namespace. For example, if you are using your university's namespace, then you can obtain a certificate of your public key from your university. This can be used to establish trust with other students in your same university. And the user can also obtain a certificate of this public key from a friend. And that certificate can be used to uh, establish trust with other people who have this mutual friend uh, who has obtained a certificate from the same friend. So uh, as we said, as I said, um, we actually use multiple ways to establish trust, whichever works best in that situation. And the ultimate goal is to obtain, uh, to authenticate the other users who you want to become friends with. Here is the name tree we have uh, designed. As you can see, there, there are several branches used for publishing uh, files or data. Uh, there is a metadata branch that contains information about new content. Basically, the name of the new content uh, and access control information, which friends are allowed to access the file. Um, this branch is shared with any uh, friends of this user using PubSub. Um, the second branch is the actual content or the actual photo or video you're trying to share. And that basically um, contains uh, the file uh, name and version number and segment number. That's the name of the file. And uh, the third branch is uh, the, this user's friends list. As you accumulate more friends or remove existing friends, this friends list also get updated and it, it's shared its updates are shared with the uh, friends, the other users. Um, and the fourth branch is keys. Uh, here, this branch contains only content keys that are used to encrypt this particular user's data. And uh, because it's, uh, sometimes content is only shared with specific friends. So uh, for those kinds of content keys, you also attach the specific friend's name uh, into, uh, to, to the end of the key name. The fifth branch is the certificates that you have obtained or your own certificate. And this can be used to authenticate data. The last branch is your own key, your own public key. Okay, so that is the overall name tree. I cannot, uh, there are actually some other branches. For example, uh, we use p to do uh, 
pops up. So there's also a sync branch, but uh, uh, I'm not showing all the details of the name tree. So the next topic I'm going to talk about is how the users establish trust. Um, as I said, they can meet in person or they can use their organization's trust anchor or they can use their mutual friend to uh, establish trust. Uh, due to time constraint, I'm just going to talk about how they're going to uh, establish trust in person. Suppose Alice and Bob meet in person and want to become friends on MP chat. What they do is they scan each other's QR code, which contains their public key. And then um, they can also uh, issue each other a certificate to prove to show that, okay, now we're friends and I, I certify your uh, public key. So then they can obtain the certificate the other one has issued for them from each other using interest and uh, data. So this, uh, after that, they fetch each other's content key. And that's the end of the, uh, it, the friendship establishment. So after this, they have each other's public key and they have each other's content key so they can decrypt each other's content and they can authenticate each other's content to make sure that that's not um, fake content. Okay, so, uh, but sometimes you cannot meet people in person, right? How do you discover other users who can potentially become your friend? Uh, we can use multicast on local network. So here I'm showing a protocol, a very simple protocol to discover other friends, other potential friends in your local network. Basically, we just send interests over multicast that contains uh, that user's own name prefix for MP chat. And this is periodically sent to all the other potential users, uh, all the other MP chat users on the local network. And once they have discovered, once they receive another interest, they uh, basically reply with their own prefix. And this way they discover each other's MP chat prefix and they establish routes towards each other to continue their communication. This is how they can discover users. Uh, then after that, they can send friendship requests to uh, become friends. And after they've become friends, how do they uh, access or how do they receive each other's content? We use, uh, Pops up API in this uh, PSync protocol to publish and subscribe to friends' feeds. The, the PSync Pops up API was uh, described in our 2017 paper in Infocom. I'm just going to give a quick high level overview of that uh, implementation. Um, so first I want to uh, clarify that as uh, Tianyu mentioned, pops up is a concept. It can be implemented in different ways. Here we are using the sync concept to implement pops up and they, there can be other types of implementations. Um, how psync works is that every um, node runs a sync instance and that sync instance uses something called invertible bloom filter to encode all the names published by that producer. And then they basically send a sync interest to each other containing that in invertible bloom filter. And through this comparison of their bloom filters, they can discover what names the other side is missing. So then they can send the uh, new names to the other side and the other side can then fetch the data for those new names. This is how um, P 
piecing works. This is uh, at a high level is called is a um, namespace syn uh, synchronization. You you're basically checking whether you have the same names or not um, using a set reconciliation protocol. Uh, in this uh, PSync, we implemented a full sync, which is a group group based synchronization. So all the users in that group will share the same set of data. And we also implemented a partial sync uh, API, which is used can be used for PubSub. Um, the partial sync API uh, basically allows any uh, sync participant to subscribe to another sync participant's data. Um, it can be a subset of that participant's data. That's why we call it partial sync. Um, here, we're using this for subscribing to friends feeds. So if the friends has several feeds, you can subscribe to two or three or any number of feeds you want. Here, mpchat uh, publishes three, three feeds. One is the metadata about newly published content. And the second one is that user's friends list. And the third feed is the content keys used to encrypt the media intended for that user's friends. So I'm going to use some, um, some uh, simplified code to illustrate how uh, a PSYNC PubSub consumer and a PSYNC PubSub producer work. Um, so first, let's assume that Bob um, is a friend of Alice and Bob consumes Alice's feeds. So how, how does Bob subscribe to uh, Alice's feeds? Basically, Bob creates a PSYNC consumer with Alice's sync prefix and a hello data callback. This is a function and another sync data callback, another function. Um, and whenever um, Alice receives this uh, uh, hello, so basically this will trigger a hello interest sent to Alice. And Alice will reply with the set of feeds or prefixes that Bob can subscribe to. And then uh, once Bob uh, receives that, inter uh, that data packet, Bob will get a hello data callback. And inside this callback, Bob can subscribe to any or all the prefixes advertised by Alice uh, in, the, in, in, the, uh, in Alice's hello data reply. Um, and afterwards, basically Bob sends a sync interest to Alice to start syncing their data. And whenever Alice publishes some new data, uh, Bob will receive a sync data callback. And inside that callback, Bob can uh, decide how to handle the data based on the data uh, type. If it's metadata, it's going to retrieve uh, it's going to look at the file name and the set of friends and then fetch the file accordingly. And um, if it's a friends list, it's gonna update, uh, it's gonna check to see if there are any new uh, people that uh, Bob can uh, send requests to, to become friends. And uh, if it's a new key, then Bob is going to replace the existing content key for Alice with that new key. So Bob can decrypt Alice's content correctly. So that's very simple at a high level. Um, Bob doesn't have to deal with specific interest or data packet. It's all at the name prefix level. And um, at the producer side, basically Alice needs to create a partial sync producer uh, with some parameters. The most important one is, the, uh, is Alice's sync prefix. And another one is Alice's data prefix. Here, uh, I've already shown this mpchat name prefix that Alice uses to publish 
her data. And whenever Alice wants to share a new photo, for example, this is the name of the photo, Alice creates a metadata object that contains the new photo's name and which friends can access the photo. And this metadata has this uh, metadata name slash a sequence number. This is the sequence number of this uh, metadata um, packet. Um, and this basically publishes this new data with the name uh, slash Alice Doe slash MP chat slash Alice Doe one, two, three slash metadata slash 56. And Bob will get a notification with this file, uh, with this uh, name. And then Bob will fetch this metadata and basically will find the photos and file name and um, uh, the set of friends who can access the photo. If Bob is one of the friends who can access the photo, then Bob will send an interest to fetch the photo and the corresponding uh, content key. Bob should have the content key already. And um, so that is uh, how to publish the metadata as a feed to the uh, PubSub API. But Alice still needs to publish that specific photo. And how do you publish that specific photo, which can have many, many segments in it, is uh, if we use the Indian CNL library or API that um, Jeff is going to talk about, then it's very simple. It's just a few lines of code. Uh, first, Alice will create a, an object with this name prefix. Um, this is the file's name, uh, file's name. and then uh, set the face to be the application face. Basically, this data will be published over the application face. And then um, cr um, Alice will create a segmented object handler to handle this data. Uh, basically, this handler will se segment this um, file and sign every segment using uh, the private key corresponding to this certificate. This is Alice's certificate. Okay, and that's how you can how Alice can publish the specific photo. Uh, and Bob, as I said receives, uh, has already received a metadata uh, packet that contains the file name for this photo. So Bob basically fe can fetch Alice's photo also with NDN CNL. And this is again, very simple. Uh, Bob basically creates a namespace called object prefix with the file name and also set the face to be the application face, and then um, defines a handler function that will handle the receive the photo um, whenever the photo uh, is received. And then Bob will create a segmented object handler to receive the photo. And th this is the function that's used to receive the photo object needed. Basically this function will fetch every segment of the photo and uh, decrypt the data and also uh, um, assemble all the segments and deliver the assembled photo to the application. So Bob doesn't have to deal with every individual segment with interests. So that, that is a very high level a API that's convenient for the application to use. So here I've already talked about how users e establish trust and um, the namespace and also how the PubSub API works. I'm going to give uh, a demo of the application.
users of MPChat. In this video, we will show the two ways users can become friends and demonstrate how to share pictures. Here we have three users, Ashless on the left, Jeremy in the middle, and the Nexus on the right. All three create a new profile by entering in their namespace, username, and password. All three are connected to a local access point. First, Jeremy and Ashless become friends by scanning each other's QR codes, and then Jeremy and the Nexus also become friends in the same way. Jeremy can now send photos to both other users and receive photos from each. Here he publishes a photo to his feed that is received by both. Each user may choose to publish his or her friends list. In this instance, Jeremy has chosen to do so. Ashless has already discovered Nexus over the local network but now has the ability to send a friend request over the network to Nexus using Jeremy as a trust anchor. Ashless sends the request, which is received by Nexus, who has the choice to accept or reject. Nexus accepts, and the same certificate signing exchange takes place. All three users are now friends. Finally, Ashless chooses to publish his photo to both of his friends individually, both of whom receive it. MPChat users can also view their friends list, delete friends, share pictures and files saved on their device, and add a profile picture or choose to not share their friends list. Okay, so that's the end of the demo and also the end of my talk. But there's already a question from GE about IBF in the Slack, Slack chat. So GE says, uh, does IBF allow multiple producers to produce under the same topic? Say if slash Slack slash channel one or each producer must produce under a different prefix. They can produce in the same namespace. Yeah, there, there's no constraint except that um, oh, there, there, there is a potential issue that is that their sequence numbers will get uh, mixed up. Yeah, so at least right now, in terms of how PSync implements the uh, sync protocol, each producer needs their own uh, data prefix. Okay. But okay. if they can somehow differentiate their sequence namespace, so for example, let's say producer one only uses sequence number from one to uh, 10,000. The second one uses from 10,001 to two to 20,000, then that way they can publish in the same namespace. 
but see, otherwise it's difficult right now at least uh, how we implement it 